Hey YouTube, Adopted Mike here, and today I'm going to be converting this GeForce GTX 680 Classified to a Hydrocopper Edition. So basically what I've done here is I've ordered the kit from EVGA, which comes with the back plate here. It's got this uh, couple other little bit of mounting hardware uh, here, instruction manual. And going further, they've included some thermal uh, grease there. We have a couple of plugs. We've got some screws here. And then we get some compression fittings in two different sizes. There we go there. And then we get the water block itself. So this is a full coverage water block so this will cover the uh, whole card here except for this little corner anyway but it'll cover the whole card even though it's not necessarily cooling the whole card. Obviously you can see here that the block will end there and the card continues on uh, up underneath here so and obviously here as well too but this is what comes with the kit so now I set this aside and first of all according to the instructions we need to remove the 21 screws located on the back so I will start with that now Okay, so there all the screws are removed. So basically now, very carefully, because some of the old thermal compound and thermal pads will uh, cause the card to stick to the heat sink and the, uh, the rest of the shroud. So very carefully pulling it back, just kind of wiggling it a little bit. Almost feels like I missed the screw, but I don't see anything, so just easily work at it here. There we go. And one thing to be careful of is right down here we have the power connection, so we want to make sure that we get that disconnected. And then there we go. So peel off some of this thermal pad and definitely I would um, save the thermal pad in case you have to reinstall the factory um, cooler. So now we'll set that off to the side and what we need to do next is we need to clear off where the thermal compound was, make sure there's no residue behind here, clear off th that uh, thermal compound and then the little bit of residue behind from the pads on the RAM chips. Okay, so there that is. Now, we need a little bitty dab of some thermal compound. Right there. 
Then we start with the back plate. And I did one of these off camera earlier. And I think I'm going to try a different way this time that I think is a little easier. So we've got to remove all of these covers for the thermal pads. They leave a little bit uh, hanging over the edge to assist in the peeling. And it looks like there's one here, but it is not removable. Um, I think this is just in case something were to come in contact and it wouldn't short it out on the metal. So this, uh, yeah, definitely doesn't get removed. And then, what I learned earlier, and we'll see if this works out, is this thing was a pain in the neck to get installed. So what I think I'm going to do is it goes, let's see if I'm in the frame here, Okay, it goes right let's try this. This will be better. Okay, so I'm gonna take this piece here and that it goes right here. And you need to make sure that that's lined up correctly in there. Because what we're gonna do next is we're going to take the water block and then we'll pull off the protective plastic cover here and also this also has some little protective things on oh but you gotta be careful because you can actually yep I see I just started to pull off the uh, thermal pad this was kind of a pain in the neck here. Okay, so now we have those thermal pads ready to go. So we'll start with making sure our little plug for the LED up here. There's an LED light built into the top of the water block. And we need, well, you don't need to, but it definitely would look a lot better if we get it plugged in correctly down here. And then we just work the water block. Gotta make sure that uh, the shim is in there correctly. We just, uh, Bend the cable out of the way and then work the water block right on top. And then we're able to flip it over. But you have to notice here that this is overhanging, so you need to put it on a surface like I have here so it is allowed to overhang here. And now we can make sure this lines up and it doesn't right now my um, so it can, it can peel off a little bit there we go let's try to get um, the shim needs to be in the right place is the is the issue that you can have and now I have it in the right place so we start off by securing the shim down like so. So we have four itty bitty tiny screws. That we will nope. Must must be ever so slightly off. Nope, there it goes. Okay. We get the shim screwed down, or rather the back plate screwed to the shim first that part there can move around the most. You may have to come in here and try to reposition it a little bit.
Okay, so now we've secured the back plate to the shim and then we go through the process of securing the back plate through the graphics card into the water block with these little black screws that it comes with. It's amazing that an assortment of such tiny little screws will keep this thing together. Okay, so now I have all the little black screws installed, and it was interesting to note that even the GPU um, uses, or the, I'm trying to think of the word here, even the, um, the main GPU hold down bolts, I guess, or screws, are the same ones that the rest of the card uses. So I thought that was kind of interesting, but I did it already on another card, and it seems to be just fine, so... Yeah. So anyway, I just go through and double check my tightening job here. Make sure everything is nice and secure. Okay. Then on the ends here, there's a different screws because it screws directly into plastic, not into uh, the metal part of the heatsink. So these are a different, uh, these are a more aggressive thread there. Okay, so that gets all of those little screws. Now there is a screw and nut and lock washer for the uh, bracket here. Get it. It goes right here, and um, it's kind of a pain in the ass to get that one installed. My best um, recommendation, you have to peel this off first, my best recommendation for that is um, some, like some needle nose pliers to help navigate in there. This is kind of a... Um, this one was definitely a pain in the ass to do. Yeah, I'll probably just do this one off camera, but uh, it's kind of it's just difficult to do to get the little nut in there and the uh, lock washer. But I'm gonna do this off camera, and I will be right back. So I was able to get that installed off camera, and that right there, I can't even really see it on the camera. Down in there to hold the uh, well, I guess it'd be this screw right here. Um. To get that one in was probably the hardest part of this installation. But uh, yeah, so I peeled off the uh, the sticker back there, and now I will peel off the front stickers. And there it is. Successfully converted a GTX 680 classified to a GTX 680 classified hydro copper edition. So that wraps up my installation. Now, or at least the water block installation, now I get to go to the rest of the water cooling build. Uh, anyway, like I said, I guess that wraps it up. And as always, thanks for watching.